This week we're going to talk about playing techniques that make your acoustic violin sound great, that will make your electric violin sound like garbage, and how to avoid them. Buddy Matt Bell with Electric Violin Shop. We're back with the From Classical to Radical series where we're teaching classical players how to easily enter the world of amplified music. We've discussed before that electric violins and acoustic violins are different instruments and should be treated as such. Yes, many of the techniques that you've developed on your acoustic violin translate very nicely to your electric violin. In fact, many electric violins are made to feel a lot like acoustic violins. Same kind of neck feel, the same markers on the instrument, but there are a few differences and we need to look at the physics of how sound is produced so we can understand why we need to change our technique a little bit. With your acoustic violin, sound is generated by dragging the bow across the strings. The strings vibrate, those vibrations are transferred through the bridge into this wooden body. There's a sound post, there's all kinds of stuff in here that's been developed throughout hundreds of years to mechanically amplify the sound that you make and project it out to the world. A well-trained violinist can generate sound pressure levels of well over 100 decibels with a classical violin. The violin body is designed to work at these levels. Electric violins, for the most part, get their sound directly from the bridge. That's where the pickup is. Some electric violins have a pickup that is placed underneath the bridge. Some have one that's embedded in the bridge. But for the most part, the high-end violins, the pickup is right here on the top of the bridge. This means that you don't get the benefit of the sound traveling through the bridge, through the body, through the sound post, and then project it out to the world. Most of what you hear is what comes right here in the top of the strings. So we need to rethink how we play at least a little bit. Here's a recording of my acoustic violin played pretty loud. The sound was picked up by a microphone that was about four feet away from the instrument. My violin is outfitted with a pickup, so at the same time that I recorded that first lick, I was also recording this, same time through, just with a pickup instead of a microphone. Not too bad, just a little bit bright. Here is the same lick played on a solid body electric violin, played with the same intensity that I did on the acoustic. Sound familiar? It's a little honky and a little brash. What am I getting at here? When you don't have all that wood for the sound to travel through, you don't have a buffering effect that removes a lot of the gravel from your sound. Simply put, playing an electric violin as hard as you play your acoustic violin is not going to make it sound good. So we need to rethink our technique. The truth is that a bridge pickup sounds the best when it's played with moderate pressure and a moderate level. So you got to lighten up that right hand a, a lot. Less pressure, more speed. If you don't believe me, record yourself and see. In a studio, this is relatively easy to do. But in a live setting with lights on and people shouting at you and an amp that's not loud enough, it takes a lot of discipline. But it's worth it. Here's an electric violin playing that same lick with a lot less pressure. It's a lot sweeter sounding than the first time through. So if you want your playing to sound nice, you got to go easy on that right hand. And again, it is hard to do when you're up on a stage and there's a lot of adrenaline going, there's energy and all that. Go ahead and try it. You're going to find that your tone benefits a lot by lightening up that right hand. Another issue that you might find, at least I do on my Viper, is that it sustains way differently than an acoustic violin does. So you may find yourself doing a lot more left hand muting than you do with your acoustic. And here's a couple different ways to do that. These are all based sort of on your preference and what you're playing. I tend to use all three at different times. Okay, you can choke the sustain out a little bit by releasing left hand pressure when you're holding a note that's, that's, uh, that's holding out a little too long. See, I lighten up that left hand and it chokes the note out. You can shut down the sustain very quickly on open strings by choking out the string with your unused fingers. You can just choke it right out. 
or if you need to do this a little more organically, you can do it right here at the nut with uh, some gentle pressure. And while we're lightening up pressure with our right hand, we can also lighten up pressure on our left hand and it's going to help you play longer and it's going to keep those notes from sustaining so long when you don't want them to. It's also going to help reduce the amount of fingerboard noise that you get. One common issue with new electric violin players is the complaint of hearing too much fingerboard and string noise from notes that you're not playing. Lightening up your touch will help a lot. It's also going to help with excessive uh, sustain, it's going to help with your endurance, and it's going to help with your tone. Another issue that we've noticed is changing bow direction. Electric violins are far less forgiving on changing bow direction than acoustic violins are. You're going to want to get really smooth with your bow changes, especially if you're pulling long tones that need to last longer than you can pull a bow. You're going to want to roll that bow up a little bit, decrescendo a bit, make the smoothest change you can, and then crescendo back and roll the bow flat again. A high pass filter and a little bit of delay is going to help mask some of those issues too. The high pass filter is going to cut the bow thump down um, and the delay is going to help cover that bow direction change a little bit. We've already done a video on reducing bow noise on your violin and you can find that video by clicking the link here. So all that to say that if you make a few adjustments with your playing style when you switch from acoustic to electric you're going to be a lot happier with the tone that you get. Remember you're amplified now. You don't have to work that hard. Let the amp do the work. We'll see you guys next time. Be sure to click subscribe so that you can be notified every time we put up a new video. Check out our Facebook page, Instagram page, and Twitter page. We've got tons of exclusive content on each of those platforms, and we we'll hope to see you guys real soon.